friends, welcome back to Nessa's Nook. So earlier you had seen a video on me making some homemade Bisquick mix. And in the, in the mix, I'm like, oh, if I could just figure out a way that I could actually uh, make that into some Red Robin biscuits at the same time to go with my dinner tonight, that you'll see obviously, you know, it'll be today when you see it, but it was actually tomorrow. But I'm like, I found a recipe. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my homemade this quick mix and make this into and I don't know for sure what I'm gonna call this quite yet um, I, I'll have to think of a name but to me it's almost kind of like an upside down um, shepherd's pie kind of casserole I don't know for sure what to call it but anyways I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down here and I talked to my husband because this actually calls for um, like the two and a half cups of the Bisquick mix uh, for the the biscuits so I thought to myself you know I love my red lobster biscuits so whatever is left I'm just gonna actually bake those into biscuits for me just to eat because I love them so I'm gonna go ahead and bring you down here um, now the recipe which I'll have pinned down below calls for two and a half cups of the original um, Bisquick mix which I did here now these are those really nice bowls that sherry gave me the other day you know i love them see they don't move around my counter which makes it really nice okay so i have that in there and i don't know why i asked for more uh baking powder because it already has some in there but it asked for two more teaspoons of baking powder so you know i have to go by the recipe and add it all right and then it asked for one teaspoon of garlic powder and I'm just going to go pour some out because if it has even more garlic, I'm fine with it because Mark and I both love garlic. So it is not going to hurt us in the least bit. All right. And then I'm going to go ahead and put in um, one cup of ch uh, ch uh, cheddar cheese. It's not sharp. It's like the mild cheddar. All right. And then it's going to ask for two third cups of milk. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this in here. There's one third. There's two third. And then it asks for two tablespoons of melted butter. Let me get my little scraper thing out of here. And this is the butter. Put that in there. Get that all nicely scraped out. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and just stir this up with a fork. I don't know for sure if I'll need more milk or anything else. I mean, we'll see as I mix this. But what's gonna happen is um, these will go on top of, I think that needs just a little bit more milk. What I'm gonna do is just pour a little bit in here and pour just a smidge at a time. Um, but what this is going to do is we're going to have some like instant potatoes. I'll be using the Walmart brand instant potatoes um, that are actually uh, garlic also. And there's a little bit of still flour down there. So I'm just going to go ahead and throw just a little bit more milk in there. Um, from what I have seen about baking, because you all know I am not a baker by any means, that I think it depends on where you're at what's going on in your in your state that day or something because some people say that they um use the same thing each time and sometimes they have to use more water or milk or or what other kind of liquid and they just add just a little bit each time and mix more but this is coming together pretty nicely and that looks like it's pretty much mixed. So what's going to happen, there's no way that that's just going to go into our dinner because I'm only using the one can of beef stew. So I'm only having my little 8 by 8 pan. So I'm going to have quite a bit of leftover red, um, red lobster biscuits. So I'll get the rest of the stuff around. I'll be right back. All right, so I have my uh, roasted garlic and some potatoes. I have my two cups of water that's actually from my sink that's actually boiling hot water. 
so I don't have to um, put that physically on the stove to cook. And of course, I forgot my spoon. <laughs> All right, so go ahead and get this stirred up. And I'm still amazed every single time I use instant potatoes. I don't know who came up with this idea that you just need that little bit of water and everything just comes back like it <laughs> should have been or something. I don't know. It just it's just weird to me. I just can't I can't get over this. So, anyways, the potatoes are done. Get this kind of cleaned up a little bit more. And go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and spray my pan because I'm gonna reuse this so I'm doing less dishes tonight. We finally went upstairs and uh, got a new thing of this. It's been upstairs. I've been fighting with that one from the dollar store forever, and I just drives me bonkers. But Now, obviously, some people would get a new clean um, container. I'm all about being lazy and reusing the dishes as much as possible because I don't like doing dishes. Even though I have a dishwasher, I still don't like to do dishes. And Mark is here in the kitchen with me if you guys are wondering what that noise is in the back. Um, we picked some more tomatoes and you'll see a video here pretty soon on some more. Um, I did find out how to make the tomato soup that actually was um, good and I actually liked it too. Um, so we're going to be making some more homemade tomato soup to can. So anyways, there's this uh, beef stew. And what I wanted to do because I just wanted to make this a little bit more hearty than it normally would be, you know, so we're only using one can to stretch things out, is I'm going to add a little bit of frozen uh, mixed vegetables because we like mixed vegetables and it will work. All right. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and stir this together. That, see, that even looks even more heartier right there, period. That looks very, very yummy. All right. I'm not going to put as much salt because this is canned stuff, and canned stuff tends to be a little bit salty. I know a lot of channels, they buy stuff as much as they can from, like, the dollar store and, and Dollar General and stuff, but... If I can, if I can make it without doing that, I prefer not to do that. Um, I just, there's just a lot of chemicals, a lot of things that's in um, the things nowadays. And that was, by the way, that was an onion and garlic mix. So I'm going to go ahead and dump this in my pan. See, I think that's going to be a perfect amount. We're probably going to even have leftovers. So that should be good. And now I've had the June over there on. Um, it's been preheating for a little bit now. So that should be fine too. And just spread this out. That looks really nice with, uh, with that. So what I'm just going to do is take some of my biscuits here. I don't want to make them too big. And I'm just going to go ahead and form a few biscuits in with dinner tonight. Try to get them about the same size. You like little meatballs or, or meatballs or something. And then the rest of these, like I said, I'm going to be going ahead and using, um, I'm going to be making up some, uh, just the biscuits by themselves after dinner. You know, I'm going to smash this down. I'm going to just go ahead and smash that. Might cook even easier. Still wonder how many times a day when you're cooking dinner do you actually have to wash your hands. You start off with clean hands and <laughs> it seems like you're constantly having to wash them through the whole cooking process. But this looks really nice and really hearty. And really, if you're looking at it, I mean, 
if you bought that um, box from the store of the Red Lobster Biscuits, I think that's two something. But to make this by myself, I probably paid 50 cents for this batch. Now granted, it's going to cost money for the milk, it's going to cost money for the cheese, but this is like $1.25 for this at the dollar store. Um, a handful of the frozen veggies and the potatoes are like a dollar, a dollar seventeen at Walmart. So this really is way under five dollars for two people. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this put in the oven and I will be right back. All right, friends. Now this is how much is left, which is not really a lot. But I think what I'm gonna do is just kind of like bump it together. I'm gonna smash it down just a little bit, but I'll probably get probably four maybe five biscuits and um, we'll just go ahead and do that hopefully it tastes good hopefully it tastes like red lobsters biscuits I will be putting some melted butter on the top of this and one of these are just gonna be a little bit bigger than the others all right kind of smash it down a little bit now when the dinner gets done I'll be going ahead and throwing these in here and I'll come back and I'll be showing you what these also look like but that's what they look like going in and I'll show you what they look like coming out all right friends I'm gonna go ahead and this is done so I melted some more butter because you know you got to have some butter on those biscuits Go ahead and put some on here and Mark will be on being busy here in just a couple seconds and we will plate this up and uh, get this ready and then meanwhile I just put in the other biscuits uh, so that should be ready here almost any time and we'll be right back when we um, plate this up. All right friends so Mark is done. So, I should probably, I'm going to get a bigger spoon. Ah, you know how I am. Not the biggest, best plater there is. There, that should help. Oh, you can see the potatoes nicely through here. Did you want two or three biscuitfuls? Three spoons. Okay, so there's mine being all a mess. And then we will see if... <laughs> This, my friends, is why I don't work at a restaurant. They would never come back. Everything would look like, oh, I don't want to eat that. All looks the same when it goes down. It don't matter. <laughs> that's true, but still. So that's got another about 13 minutes on the biscuits. So you'll still see the end of that. But this is the meal. I'm gonna have to find a name for it. But this is what we're having for dinner tonight. And um, I'll show you the biscuits here as soon as those get done also. And we'll be back. All right, friends, and this is the biscuits, or the red, red lobster biscuit ones here. Of course, you gotta put more butter on these. Yeah, this ended up taking probably about uh, 16 or so minutes to cook this. And I put it on 360 with my convection oven. And they do indeed taste like red lobster biscuits. They're very good. Mark took a little bite off this one right here. <laughs> so, obviously, you know, it's too hot to eat the whole thing. But I'm going to pull off a little piece with a fork here. Because you know, you know I want my red lobster biscuits. So, let me pull this off real quick. And here's a little bite here. Mmm. And we've not been to Red Lobster in probably since 2007. We used to go there all the time. 
um, because we used to eat pork and seafood and we don't anymore. But from what I can taste, because like I said, my taste is still completely off. But Mark says this tastes exactly like the Red Lobster Biscuits to him. I think that bite I had was amazing. So my question from the earlier video of making the Bisquick mix, yes, you can move that over. I will put the instructions down below. And um, if you do make that, please let me know. If you have made it with, um, with Bisquick mix, also please let me know down below. And also let me know, will you be trying this? Who knows? I mean, it might work for you guys. It might not. But I think this is pretty amazing. And I can see me having these more often. I think I'd rather have these versus like a regular biscuit unless it's one of those really nice buttery biscuits like which you would get, you know, at like, you know, not necessarily Texas Roadhouse, but like Texas Roadhouse type thing. So thank you very much for stopping by. I hope you all have a very, very blessed and wonderful day.